Hey there, welcome back to What's Your Take? Let's get started today. We got multiple sports topics to get to. The first one is the World Series. It's all tied up at 1 1. Atlanta Braves versus the Houston Astros. And the Braves took game one. They won 6 to 2. And they re literally hit this game off with a bang. The first pit. The first batter up in the World Series was Solar, and Solar, Sol, Solar leads the game off with a home run. That was crazy, man. A home run. Jose Solar lead it, just smacked it out of the yard. First at bat of the World Series was awesome. And the Braves just took off from there. Ozzy... Alvarez who went two for five. Freddie Freeman went one for three in game one. And the Braves scored five. They scored all they scored almost five runs in the first three innings. Or scored five runs in the first three innings. I mean they were just on fire. The craziest story of game one of the World Series was starting pitcher for the Atlanta Bla Bla Atlanta Braves, Charlie Morton, he only threw 16 pitches, and he struck out three batters on a broken leg. That's crazy. That's, a, that's definitely a trivia question somewhere in the future. Who is the first pitcher to strike out three batters in the World Series with a broken leg? Charlie Morton. There you go. Now... Uh, game two did not go Atlanta's way. Houston won game two, seven to two. Um, oh yeah, real quick. Um, AJ Minter he actually got the game one win for the Atlanta Braves. Game two, Houston won seven two. Jose Altuve, Altuve went two for five. And hit a home run in the seventh. Houston scored five runs in the first two innings. So just kind of like the Braves. The Braves scored five runs in three innings. Where Houston did it in the first two. So a lot of action in the first couple innings. And then not so much for the rest of the game. So far in this World Series. Uh, Max Freed. Uh, one of Atlanta's best pitchers. He was the pitcher that unfortunately gave up five runs. Uh, in those two innings and he pitched a total of five innings and struck out six. He gave up a total of six runs actually. So gave up all runs but one. Not the greatest. I really thought Atlanta would you know come out with Max Fried on the mound and dominate but it just wasn't his night. Now let's get to the NFL. Packers Cardinals this could definitely be a playoff matchup come playoff time and Aaron Rodgers even told Kyler Murray he'd see him in the playoffs which by the way both these teams have been playing this season so far uh, I'd be shocked if we didn't see them match up in the playoffs but the Packers were able to give the Cardinals their first loss of the season the Packers won 24 to 21. Um, JJ Watt is out, probably shoulder season-ending uh, surgery. Hopefully not, but it looks like he's going to be out for the season. I mean, the guy is always injured, and but he still produces on the field. Just can't stay healthy. Come on, man. Uh, but Aaron Rodgers, he had a good game, 22 for 37. Threw for 184 yards, two touchdowns. Now, if I hear that Aaron Rodgers threw for less than 200 yards, I would think that they lost. But they didn't. Randall Cobb only had three receptions, but two of those receptions were for touchdowns. You know, Aaron's always looking for Cobb when they need a score, and he delivers. He only had 15 yards, but does it really matter? He scored twice, so... As long as they can put points on the board, which Randall Cobb did for the Packers. Kyler Murray, 
And I think this is one of the reasons, or not the mo the main reason, but a big reason why the Cardinals lost is Kyler Murray went, went 22 for 33, 274 yards, but two interceptions. Turnovers, people. They kill you. Don't turn the ball over. It was also sacked two times. And the Cardinals, man, they just looked out of sync. Like, they weren't playing aggressive like they usually do. Their defense is not, if not the top, one of the top defenses in the league. And they, the Packers, felt like they could do whatever they wanted. I think the Packers had more time of possession than the Cardinals did. The Packers, like, I think at one point watching the game, the Packers had, like, 30 minutes of possession. And the Cardinals had, like... 15 or 17 minutes, something like that, of time of possession. So the Packers were really moving the ball against this Cardinals defense last night. Um, the, all the Cardinals' touchdowns were rushing touchdowns. Chase Edmonds had seven carries for 30 yards and one touchdown. James Conner had five carries for 22 yards and two touchdowns. The Packers overall outgained the Cardinals only by one yard. 335 yards of total offense to the Cardinals, 334 yards of offense. So, honestly, when you look at the stats, it looks like the Cardinals maybe should have won this game. But, again, turnovers. You know, Connor Murray had two interceptions, and the Packers will, were able to capitalize on that with two touchdowns. And lastly, what we have in store is NBA is back. And you know who has been at the top of their game since the NBA has been back? Ja Morant. He has been on fire. And you can definitely tell that he has worked on his shooting over the offseason, his defense. He is looking great right now. He scored 37 points against the Cavaliers. Then, the biggest game, he had 40 points against the Lakers, a top team in the West, where he hit five three-pointers. I watched this game, and he was stroking. He was hitting, like, I think he hit, like, three or four threes in the first half. He had this really not sick reverse layup in the game, and he could just do it all. Now, he did miss a free throw at, like, the biggest time of the game, where they gave him a loss, but... They wouldn't have made it close without John Morant's 40 points. Then the next night, the Blazers were able to hold John Morant to 17 points. I think he went like 5 for 19 or something like that for shooting. But that game was really kind of bad overall around. I watched that game the other night and um, Damian Lillard, he was like 4 for 19 at one point. Both guys just really seemed to struggle, which you maybe got to credit... The Blazers and the Grizzlies defense getting on their best players and making them uh, making the flow of the game hard for them. So, and then last night, the Grizzlies played the Warriors where John Moran had 30 points, but Curry had 36 points. Went into overtime where the Grizzlies won 104 to 101. And then another game I got to talk about was Curry's 25 points in the first quarter against the Clippers. That game was insane. Didn't miss from the field in the first quarter at all. Nine for nine. He had like five threes and he was just going off. He had 45 for the game. I mean, Curry just picking up where he all left off from last season. Just balling. Games tonight, Hornets versus Heat. The Hornets have started off good this season, 4-1 and one so far. Um, I would pick the Hornets, honestly, to make the playoffs this year. Right now, I would say they'd probably be in the playing tournament. I know it's early, people. I know. But if I just had to guess, I would say they'd probably be in the playing tournament or the seventh highest I think they could get right now at the time is maybe the 6th seed, but I bet they'll be like the 8th or 7th. The Heat are looking good with Jimmy Butler, and I, I expect them to make a run in the East. 
be one of the top four teams in the East this year. Would be kind of shocked if they were below fifth in the East or even didn't, you know, didn't make the playoffs. And then we got the Mavericks and the Nuggets tonight. Both those teams really good. You got Luka on one side and you got Jokic on the other. Uh, MVP from last year. So that should be a good game as well. All right, so that's the show today. Thanks for tuning in, tuning in to What's Your Take. Stay tuned in for some college football this weekend. My take on Nebraska football. Thanks.